course, the big case in D.C. this oh, week yeah. at trial is the Sussman, well, the Sussman trial. Sussman. Sussman. Right. I mean, so I, I get notifications whenever my name comes up in an article. And I think now my Twitter feed is on the radar for, you know, news outlets that are looking for hot tweets on things. But there was an article on uh, Robbie Mook, who's who was a witness on Friday. I mean, let's back let's back this all up. We'll get to Robbie Mook. Michael Sussman is on trial. He is the lawyer for I don't think just the, the, the Democratic Party. He's he was Hillary Clinton's lawyer as well, correct? Like directly her lawyer. Yeah, he was part of Perkins Co. And Perkins Co. represented uh, a a everybody connected. Not only did they represent the Democratic National Committee and the various campaigns, they represented the individuals um, pretty consistently across them. They represent almost every minute. When I took on the Covington kids case against Senator Elizabeth Warren, uh, Perkins Co. lawyers were involved in the process. And so the, they, they basically represent everybody. Uh, and so that's uh, Michael Sussman was a very high ranking D.C. insider lawyer. It shows you how D.C. works, that he could get on the phone and get the general counsel to the director of the FBI to have a personal meeting with him in a drop of a hat. Well, but and this is the, so we'll get to this fact. Oh, you got to go to bed. Get out of here. Uh, we'll get to this. Sussman is uh, he's accused of having made one false statement to the FBI as relates to who he was representing when he met with the FBI to give them one of the three white white papers on which he was working. Um, he said, I'm not there on behalf of a client. Turns out not only was he there on behalf of a client, but he was billing that client, Hillary Clinton. That was to give them one of the three white papers, which was the phony steel PP dossier. Um, he billed Hillary Clinton and the campaign for preparing the three white papers for meeting with the FBI, he then lied about it. Robert, my question was this. How did the FBI ever believe that he was not there on behalf of the Clinton campaign and there as a concerned citizen when they knew damn well? I mean, there's no way. The FBI knew who he was. They knew who he worked with. They knew what he worked in. They knew that he was with the DNC when they were working with CIA, FBI to try to get to the bottom of the Russia DNC server hacks. It, it, it's suspending disbelief that the FBI says, OK, we believe that you're here as a concerned citizen and not on behalf of the Clinton campaign. Am I am I fabricating or seeing controversy where it doesn't exist? Uh, no, I mean, I think and I think the, the issue I've had with the uh, with the whole Durham inquiry is it struck me as an effort to misdirect prosecution efforts to blame everything that happened on Russiagate, Spygate and Ukraine gate on just a group of corrupt mid-tier outsiders, for the most part, with one or two mid-level insiders who just made small mistakes. And that's the narrative that Durham has pushed consistently. And the moment he didn't flip Kleinsmith was the moment you knew there was no chance, and there's people out there still hoping, there's no chance he's going after Hillary Clinton. There's no chance he's going after Peter Stroke. There's no chance he's going after James Baker. There's no chance he's going after Mark Elias. There's no chance he's going after Perkins Co. as a law firm. There's no chance he's going after uh, James Comey or John Brennan or G Clapper or any of the others. Because at the moment he he gave a sweetheart deal to Kleinsmith, that locked it in because that was the guy who could squeal. With Sussman, I think he thought Sussman would just cut a deal, get a similar Kleinsmith outcome, and Sussman's so arrogant that he's refused to do it. Now, he has some reason for confidence. His two reasons for confidence. One is what you mentioned that he knows that everybody knew what he was really there for. And he told him he wasn't there for the FBI, uh, for a client just for their purposes. So they could have a nice clean record so they could claim the FBI could lie to the FISA court and say, we don't know if this has any ties to a can campaign or not. Um, and it, it was for their CYA, not really his CYA. And, and they, they didn't, they didn't fill out whatever a 302. They, they took no notes of that meeting. Is that, is that atypical Robert? Uh, bordering oh, on... atypical. I mean, all of it is, all of it is. <laughs> I mean, what was really happening now, what has been confirmed by the evidence presented at trial is that the Clinton campaign organized Russiagate and laundered information and Intel disguised as legal fees through a law firm uh, that was actually spreading the missing disinformation throughout and then hiding it from subpoenas under false attorney client privilege claims. I said this from the moment the story broke at any level, that this is what people would find, uh, that they would, that they had laundered the Intel using law firms and using law enforcement in the media to do so. So the other thing that's coming out is how many of these people were also government informants. And there was people that they're on federal payroll while they're on the Clinton campaign payroll. 
right? They got both services going on. And the, and the goal was, how do you verify this? You have people with big credibility and reputation like Sussman who have the relationships and the ties and the connections. You have the groups that have ties to the big media organizations and you create a circular uh, deal. So you, you leak the story to two places and then you say, because both stories said it, they confirm the original story, right? Even though you're the original source. This is an old game of laundering it's, intel it's, and laundering it's, information. It's the wrap-up smear that Nancy Pelosi described so eloquently, probably from experience. And, and they yes, were doing he billed the campaign for the meeting with the FBI. Well, that, that's the that's with all these lawyers. That's the one place they get caught is they're so <laughs> greedy. You knew they were gonna bill for it. I mean, they bill for lunch, they bill for you know having an idea when one of the first things the corporate lawyer taught me. I was you know, I was only really a summer clerk at this corporate law firm, and he said, Hey, you know, you take the the bus or subway in each day. And I was like, Yeah. He goes, think about a client while you're on there. And if you can think about multiple clients, you can bill each of them six minutes because we've smallest billing in increment is six minutes. So, you know, I could spend three minutes thinking about three clients and somehow the law firm wants to bill them for 18 minutes. Oh, <laughs> oh here another trick. If you take a train from Montreal to Toronto uh, for a client, but you work on another client's file, 10 hours billing time right there. Boom. It's oh, yeah. The old, the old travel block. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a block. It's terrible, billing. people. It's unethical. I'm not saying this is a joke. Oh, it's unethical. Completely. But they um, do it all the time. And but, because he's Sussman. And the real scam here was they knew they – like here's the other false story that kind of Durham is pushing and other people are for, uh, trying to justify Russiagate are, are, are putting out there, which is that, uh, the F, that the going to the FBI would have stopped the media from covering it. It's just the opposite. They knew in order to get the New York Times to really give it coverage – they needed to be able to confirm there's an open FBI criminal investigation into it. That's the other reason he was doing it. Now, the problem is the FBI can't look like they're doing overtly political activities. So they needed the outsiders to lie to them about the source of their information and the reason for their presence. And this is Durham's continuing the corrupt FBI's business, which is just like he did with the CIA rendition case. Frankly, it's what he really did if you dug in in the Whitey Bulger case. People like somehow Robert Mueller somehow got to walk. Robert Mueller was in Boston when they were running Whitey Bulger as an informant. Somehow he never gets implicated in that case. Durham just took out some mid-level people. That's his MO. He comes in and takes out outsiders and mid-level people in order to protect the most powerful people. And that's what the Sussman case really is. What's frightening is that the D.C. jury pool is so bad you have a bunch of the D.C. jurors donated to Clinton, supported Clinton. Some AOC of them, you know, well. some of them have relatives that play on the same teams as the law, as the defendant. Things that would never be OK, typically in a criminal case. These are the typical uh, d uh, defendants. Some of the jurors that are sitting jurors said they couldn't be fair if Trump was directly on trial. They're going to be fair here. Um because he's dead to rights. I mean, there's no question that Sussman lied to the FBI. Well, but hold on, Robert. And, and, and the lie was a material lie. You don't, here's one thing that the legal left is out there trying to say it's completely false. And they're saying that it, it has to actually be material. In other words, it has to have actually impacted the FBI. No, it doesn't. It just has to be capable of impacting the FBI. They've all testified that the fact that he worked for a, a, a specific client that wasn't the opposing candidate was a material fact to whether to, to that inquiry. That's because, why he well, lied. He people, lied so that they could lie internally and lie to their bosses. And people are going to say, look, the FBI ultimately decided not to move on his information. So therefore, you know, no harm, no foul. But Robert, I would have thought his best defense would be, it was a freaking joke. Obviously they knew who I was and obviously they knew who I was there for because they, they, saw, they worked with me back with the DNC hacks. Everybody knows who I am. But what is Everybody none of that matters legally? In other words, at the end of the day, did he tell them that he worked for a client or not? And if he didn't, uh, then it was, a, or he told them that he wasn't, and there's written proof that he said that, that he wasn't, then he made a material lie to the FBI in the course of an investigation. You know, so that, I mean, that's where I, I think Durham always thought he would just cut a sweetheart plea deal and go. Sussman is so, this tells you the arrogance of these DC insiders. They feel they're so above the law they could flagrantly violate it to create a bogus paper trail, and they should never be held to account, period, even when they're caught literally with their hand in the cookie jar.
Core O says Viva Sussman's lie versus Flynn's. As far as I remember from Flynn's lie, it wasn't an, a lie. It was an equivocation that he's not sure that he remembered something. And they then basically said, no, you you ought to have remembered it because uh, because it was the case. Flynn's and Flynn didn't initiate that conversation. They did. And they and he Flynn thought the conversation was happening under different terms. There's a good piece in the Hill about how different the Sussman and Flynn cases have been handled. So, I mean, if Sussman's not convicted, the D.C. jury pool is a complete joke, just a complete joke. And and people, Republicans should start looking at legislative reforms that remove D.C. as even being an independent jurisdiction. It should no longer be an independent jurisdiction. It is not capable of being impartial in any case that has any political overtones whatsoever. Well, so, so I mean, real sus, man. This, the deal is this. Here's the deal, man. No, now I sound like Joe Biden. They should have known. Like, it's not it's not a joke. The FBI knew exactly who Sussman oh, was. Yeah. They knew he was a cybersecurity lawyer working with working for and on behalf of Hillary, the campaign, for years. When he says, I'm here as a, as a concerned citizen, it, it's laughable to anybody with half a brain, and it ought to have been laughable oh, to, the, to the FBI. It was for their benefit. It was, hey, you tell me you're not here for a client, then I can legitimately run it up as this not coming from a okay. contaminated source. I mean, they, they were in on it. It was a conspiracy between the two of them. And everybody knows it, but everybody has to pretend otherwise because Durham wants to cover up for the high ranking corruption that took place here. And, and, and the media silence or the absence of, of the absolute outrage that should be flowing from this is a good indication. This was the Alpha Bank story that uh, Dan Abrams of Law and Crime, uh, after I ran a piece on his publication, he got really agitated at how popular it was, which would be, you'd seem kind of odd, but because I pointed out, here's all the risk from Spygate. And he was like, oh, you know, Barnes, you don't know what you're talking about. There was nothing like this that happened. He goes, what we really should be investigating is the Alpha Bank story. What did the FBI say this week? That that story was so laughable and so absurd, they thought a mental patient came up with it. That was the official testimony. So that's Dan Abrams was out there repeating fake news that a mental patient, uh, 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 that a mental patient would even know is nuts. And so that's just a little reminder as to their credibility and reliability of Dan Abrams, Law and Crime, ABC, all the rest. Uh, so, so, okay, no, so I'm glad because I'm sitting there thinking like, I feel like I'm going crazy again in that it was an implausible statement. But yeah, so it's self-serving. They, you know, they don't, they determine it's a totally idiotic uh, story, but nonetheless, somehow Yahoo runs the story and then the FBI cites well, Yahoo. It worked. Because the FBI confirmed there was a criminal investigation to the New York Times and ran the story right on the eve of the election. We're going to get to the Barnes and Elon in a second. I want to finish up with Sussman. So this is what's going on with Sussman. But the, the biggest news of the week and where everybody's making the same joke, and it's a sick, it's a sick sad joke, but it's a sign of the times that Robbie Mook uh, you know, had better be very careful. These he better he better have a food taste. He better not have any. United, uh, the United Spot. I think it's called United Spot on YouTube. Had a great uh, little meme version of uh, someone uh, of Hillary showing up at Robbie Mook's door over and over again, pretending to be a different <laughs> delivery service person. The uh, and so uh, you know that so, uh, there, there was also you know uh, obituaries written for Robbie Mook. Anyways, what Mook testified for anybody who doesn't know, he was the campaign manager for Hillary Clinton in 2016. He test. My understanding is he's now on the outs with Hillary Clinton. Uh, Clinton blamed everybody but herself, of course, for losing. But uh, he said that it came directly from Hillary. That this was not something being done beneath, without her note, notice, or knowledge. This was her orchestration and organization. Russia Gate and spy. Russia Gate was fake from day one. They knew it was fake from day one. They came up with more, more fake, crazy, ludicrous stories. Laundered it through uh, uh, a government, a set of government agents that were more than happy to do their bidding. At the Justice Department, the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, the o the Office of uh, uh, National Intelligence, Director of National Intelligence, all of them were complicit and involved. The highest ranking media members were eager. Reuters, NBC, ABC, CBS, all of this has been disclosed in the court record, were eager to push this completely fake narrative that anybody who spent five seconds looking at the claim knew was fake. Federal informants were involved in this process. So all the corruption that some of us said were present has been confirmed in the record, in this trial, in the pleadings and testimony. Unfortunately, uh, there, there's doubt as to whether even Sussman will be convicted. And unlike some of my friends, uh, I don't think it will go any further. I think this will be pretty much the end and the wrap up of the Durham investigation. Nobody higher up is going to get hit. They're all going to get to walk. 
and you know uh, friends of my, like you know uh, uh cash cash patel right uh some others that are optimistic are going to be deeply disappointed as they discover how the deep state really operates because pe people have to appreciate that they're not on even uh sussman right now is not on trial for having fabricated having funded a, a bogus dossier his that's that's all already water under the bridge he's only there because he lied so even well, if he gets convicted you know, by the way why he can't say he wasn't there for a client right one lie is a lie to the fbi the other would be mail fraud of sending a bill this goes to the great uh john grisham original film uh the firm right uh the the mail fraud is everybody who sends a legal bill through the mail and they falsify what they build for has committed a rico offense so sussman could once he billed for it he could never say he wasn't there for a client and he just has to try to but he's so arrogant that he's like ah i shouldn't face any consequence for this he's probably going to get real time now if he gets convicted because of his arrogance but it gives you a, a sense of his and dc just thinks they're above the law and never should be held accountable period end of story i i just we'll we'll close off the book and we'll bookend the 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 uh robbie mook is that he he confirmed in in he was there More as a testimony for the defense he was there as a, as a as a witness for the defense and he confirmed that hillary clinton personally okayed uh authorizing sussman to disclose this this one oh, of the three white papers this had hillary clinton written all over it you can just watch some of the hush hushes about at, at viva barnes law dot locals dot com go to the hush hush playlist just watch the last two about the death of vince foster and the death of ron brown and you understand hillary's got her fingers in a lot of interesting places